good morning to Willow Hill and everyone joining us for worship today. We are so excited to worship with you on this second Sunday of Easter. We have a wonderful worship service planned, which includes a message from Pastor Brad, Embrace a New Understanding, with a focus on scripture from the book of Acts. As we move through the worship service, feel free to comment on our YouTube video or our Facebook post and let us know what you think. We would love to connect with you further and talk about what you enjoyed and what your takeaways were for today's worship service. If you're new to Willow Hill and you'd like to stay connected, please consider filling out the digital connection card, which is linked in the video's description. If you'd like to stay up to date on coming events, the staff contact information, the latest worship videos, and more, check out our website, willowhill.org. I'll link that as well as all our social media information in the video's description as well. Now at this time, we will be led in prayer by our liturgist, Greg Holloway. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may we find the joy of the Lord even in the midst of our trials. We pray that you would teach us what it means to see beyond our troubles, knowing that you are with us. Even so, Lord God, we see the challenges those around us are facing. We ask you to intervene, to be with those who are in need, to prompt us to participate with you as you care for your people, and to restore creation and make all things new. We pray that we would not be anxious, but that you would give us your peace. Let us live differently in the midst of trial so that the world might see you in us. We ask these things as we are reassured by the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is time for small talk, which means I get to spend a few minutes talking with you kids. You know, I've been wondering this week about what it was like for the disciples and Jesus as they were going through that time when Jesus was arrested and being killed and until Jesus was raised from the dead again. You know, we've, we've heard that they've probably been sad and I wonder if they were confused about what was going on. And I bet they were pretty frightened, pretty scared, wondering what might happen to them too. But one thing we don't talk about very much is if they were angry at all. Now, we know the most important thing about Easter was that Jesus came back. Jesus didn't stay dead. Jesus came back alive and was with his friends again. And they all felt joyful and happy and surprised. And some of them were a little doubtful at first until Jesus appeared to them too. And then they were joyful. But I wonder sometimes if they ever started to get mad. Like my little critter in my storybook here. This is a Mercer Mare book about Little Critter. And in this book, Little Critter is so mad. Things just don't go his way. And every time something happens that doesn't go his way, he gets mad. And then something else happens and he gets even madder. In fact, he gets so mad. He just doesn't know what to do until he is finally so tired he just has to go to sleep. Now I'll read the story out on our Willow Hill Kids page if you want to hear that sometime. But today I just thought we would talk about that a little bit. I wonder if the disciples, all of Jesus' friends, once they knew that Jesus was alive, so they didn't have to be sad anymore and they didn't have to be as scared, but I wonder now if they started getting angry I said, you know, Jesus, they shouldn't have treated you that way. And maybe we want to do something to let them know how angry we are. 
And I wonder if Jesus didn't feel that way sometimes. But you know what the Bible tells us? The Bible tells us that Jesus even said while he was dying, he said, forgive them. And when Jesus came back to be with the disciples again, after he had come back to life, the Bible tells us that Jesus came to them and said, I am giving you this special gift, a gift that we call the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said he was leaving them with this gift when he was going into heaven to, to stay with God. He said, I'm leaving you with this gift, not so you can be angry and, and go get back at somebody or do something bad, but I'm leaving you this gift so that you can love other people, so you can forgive other people the way Jesus forgave, so that we can all do good the way Jesus did good with his life here on earth and the way Jesus wants us to do good and to love in our lives, even when we don't feel like it. Now, it's okay to be angry sometimes. It's okay to be mad. There's a couple stories in the Bible where Jesus got mad too, and that's okay. We can be a little bit mad because we don't get to go to school and play with our friends, because we don't get to go out and do fun things and hang out with a bunch of people and have people come to our house. It's okay to have those feelings. But the gift that Jesus gave us, when God brought Jesus back to life, one of the gifts that they gave us was this gift of the Spirit that helps us, even when we feel mad or disappointed or upset by something and wanting to do something to show someone how unhappy we are, in our hearts we have this gift that Jesus gave us called the Holy Spirit that will help us to choose love and to do good even when we don't feel like it. Let's put our hands together to say our sentence prayer where you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for teaching us how to do good even when we don't feel like it. Please help us always choose to love. In Jesus' name, amen. During this pandemic, some may fail to consider the implications of this situation on a woman and her children facing domestic abuse or homelessness. Willow Hill supports the assistance of women in these unfortunate circumstances through the support of a local mission serving Woodford County Heart House. Heart House is a six-room shelter providing assistance to a woman and her children who have fled a domestic abuse or homelessness crisis situation. It is a faith-based program which provides assistance in the areas of mental, emotional, and spiritual growth. Willow Hill provides support to the amazing work they do there through regular financial gifts. Willow Hill would not be able to provide these financial gifts if not for the generosity of people like you. So thank you to everyone who provides generous gifts of their time, talent, and financial resources, allowing Willow Hill to continue to support local missions and ministries in this way. I have provided the contact information for Heart House in the video's description. At this time, Please join in singing Set a Fire with Tegan Roberts. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. No place I would rather be.
No place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. The scripture today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14a and verses 22 to 32. I read from the New International Version. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the, law, the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on an oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. I've got to tell you that it, it feels like a sacred moment that I honestly thought I might never get again to stand in uh, this worship center, to smell the sacred smell of that wood one more time here at Willow Hill. United Methodist Church. As I stand before you on this second Sunday of Easter, this Sunday that follows that great resurrection story, I think about how we are blessed. Even in our social isolation, we are blessed. Even as some wonder about the economic situation in their families economic well-being. We are blessed as some mourn the loss of loved ones from diseases and COVID-19. We are blessed even as it seems like uh, one story rises and uh, another upheaval comes to replace at it as things seem to calm down. We are blessed today because we are allowed to embrace a new understanding. Now, some will say, Brad, you, you're going to talk about that historical perspective that, that Acts and the author of Acts, Luke, seems to put before us. That, that perspective from chapter 2, verse 14, and then 22 to 36, that's nothing new. But we are reminded again and again by commentator Caroline Lewis, who I want to credit with the foundation for much of what I'm going to share with you today, that uh, Reverend Lewis uh, invites us into this Sunday as one of those three Sundays that 
that come after Easter in uh, the liturgical calendar this year. Uh, the liturgical calendar is our big word for our Christian seasons, our way of marking not just human time, but marking God's revelation and God's activity in our life through the scriptures in an organized, systematic way. Set in the context of Easter, Peter pronounces this historic sermon for his day. It rocked those who heard it. But for us, he makes no proclamation that we probably have not heard before. But even still, those words have power. Power for me and I hope power for you as you think about how the resurrection in and for our time and place demands, we believe, that no power on earth other than God will have the final word. Not the stock market going down, down, down. Not businesses and municipalities making cost-cutting and austerity measures. Not health crises through the coronavirus. Not uh, political forces seeming to be at odds with one another, Democrats and Republicans, that God will have the final word. As I think about uh, the central character of Peter, not only in this biblical narrative, but in the history of Christendom, I'm reminded that we, from time to time, are invited to, to, to say, we're not going to just go through life like business as usual. It seemed as though 2019 was coming to an end. The stock market was roaring upward. It seemed like things as the year began in 2020 were going to be prosperous. And, and there were uncertainties, yes, political uncertainties, uh, 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 the uncertainties within our denomination of United Methodisms. But all of a sudden, we had to embrace a new understanding. All of a sudden, everything we knew was turned upside down. How that reminds us today that without the Holy Spirit, we are incapable of the kind of witness to which we are called, a kind of witness committed to seeing the continuity of God in a world where leaders and systems fall far short of the fulfilling of the sure promises of God. Without the Holy Spirit, uh, we are left like empty shells. It, I know it's hard for us 21st century Christians, at least my brand of 21st century Christianity, struggles with this concept of the Holy Spirit, something supernatural, something uh, divinely directed outside of my will and your will and our plans. But the scriptures bring us back to that continuity. Uh, isn't it great to have something to depend on that goes back further than the even writing of the biblical word on pages? Isn't it something assuring to, to feel that, that God has not abandoned us, that God never abandoned us, that, that God ties together that empty tomb that we celebrated last week, that God embraces us as we continue to wait on Jesus to appear to us over and over with fresh faces and new ways and new outlooks uh, as we embrace uh, new understandings that in a world that will never be the same again. I have had some of my clergy colleagues say to me as I spoke to them uh, as their district superintendent that that we're just kind of going to hunker down, Brad, and we're just going to wait for 
this to be over, whatever this is, and then we can go back to normal. Uh, there is no going back. There was no going back to that tomb because Jesus got up. There's no going back because we've had to do ministry in ways that we never envisioned or imagined. Some of us hoped that we would develop some muscles to engage the world in this technological world of the 21st century, but we kind of wanted to tiptoe into that world. Some of us thought and hoped that hopefully we might physically die and not have to experience that change, that we could just have our sanctuaries and our churches, our religious institutions to affirm what used to be and give us comfort in that. But you see, I think Peter and biblical writers from Luke on, are calling us, beckoning us, inspiring us, I say even kicking us out of our comfort zones. We are being pushed to this place where the Holy Spirit uh, is existing and to this place where our witness is committed to seeing something new even when it has not appeared yet, to seeing that there's hope over the horizon, to seeing that we are not alone in our physical struggles and in our sorrows, to seeing that we have a mission, if you would, greater than just preserving the historical framework of this Christian faith. I didn't say we ought to abandon it. I said there's something greater than the historical framework. When we look around us today, when you watch the 24 hour incessant and repeating news stories that seem to drag you down, I wonder, is there anybody else that just gets depressed watching the news cycle? But I think that as we look for those kernels of hope, as we look for those buds of inspiration that, that we can embrace something greater than leaders and systems. I love how commentator Caroline Lewis reminds us that, that, that it's, it's something greater that we are called to embrace that that is our mission now. We use that word called like everybody knows what it means. Again, it's part of our Christian nomenclature that has become a part of, of how we speak and how we live, but, but some of us need to be reminded that a call is more than a personal desire to do something. A, a call is more than just being affirmed by an institution, whether it's in an ordination or a licensing or some type of credentialing that says you get to stand in front of people and preach or pray or administer the sacraments of communion and baptism or marry and bury that, that a, a, a call. It's not just something that those set apart for holy tasks have. A call is something that hopefully all Christians are seeking and embracing as we strive to, to, to move beyond the empty tomb, as we strive to, to experience God in worlds that we never imagined. A call is something anointed and, and inspired by God. I think that each of us has a call and, and that just like Peter embraced his call that we ought to be searching for our call and then we ought to be living out our call and we ought to be sharing however God has spoken to us. Now most of us have not heard an audible voice but 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 we we've heard something calling us out of our comfort zone. Again, when leaders and systems fall short, what then? What then can we put our hopes in? What then can, can help us organize around uh, 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 something greater than ourselves? What then are we as people of God inspired to be? 
Yes, when the Republicans or the Democrats let you down. Yes, when uh, the, uh, the economic system that some of us were really counting on comes crashing to a halt. What then? The word of God says, what then? It is Jesus the Christ. What then? God has the final word. Again, I'm just pumped to be with you today. I'm just pumped to still be the pastor of Willow Hill. I'm just pumped with the opportunities of serving through the United Methodist Church in the Illinois Great Rivers Conference. That, for those who don't know, that's everything but Chicago and the suburbs in the state of Illinois. I'm pumped to walk with those in little churches and big churches. I'm pumped when I think about it as we walk together, we have a chance to share the love of Jesus, the hope of God in this Holy Spirit that surpasses our intellectual capacity. Let us pray as we prepare to move forward. May this be your benediction today. Almighty God and loving, affirming, and comforting God, we go forth from wherever we are physically, but wherever we are emotionally and spiritually, I pray that you would walk with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would be your advocate, it would be your comforter, it would be your healer. Go forth into the world, whether it's your families or your businesses or the world that is uncertain. May you go forth with hope. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Son. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. If this worship service has inspired you to embrace a new understanding, consider seeing the continuity of God through these opportunities. The peacemakers and friends making the face masks are in need of elastic. Please check your resources for any color elastic that is one inch wide or smaller that you would be able to donate. All donations may be placed in the plastic bin on the bench in front of the church. The face mask supply will continue to be replenished and in exchange for a face mask, please donate to the food pantry. Local food pantries continue to serve the community and donations are still being collected in the blue bin in front of the church. If you have a school-aged child within Germantown Hill School District, they are offering lunch for children within the district. Please check their Facebook page for the request form and specific details. We were unable to verify the details for the other surrounding school districts, so please check with your school district about lunch assistance for school-aged children. It is not too late to join the Unafraid Study being led by Pastor Brad. Men may join the Tuesday morning study at 6 a.m. and the Facebook group is open to anyone, though it is a closed group. Please contact Gina Hewlett if you're interested in joining one of these studies. The Junior and Senior High Bible Study is meeting with Bill Peterson via Zoom on Thursday evenings at 8. Please contact Gina Hewlett to receive the link to call. To keep in touch, sign up for alerts through the Remind app by texting at Willow Hill to 81010. If you have prayer concerns, please contact Gina Hewlett. And for pastoral care, contact Pastor Alan Newhall or Pastor Bradley Watkins. Contact information can be found on our website. If you enjoyed today's worship service, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel for the latest videos. Thank you and have a blessed day.